What's going on my boys? YT Dan back at it again with another card game review video. Now we're gonna be looking at a game called Xenozard. This is a different kind of game that I have ever played before. Um, it has a completely different concept on how it looks at the digital card game genre. And I'm really starting to enjoy playing these different games. Now, personally, I do not like making these type of sponsored videos unless I do enjoy the card game. I'm, as you would imagine, I'm approached by many different companies with many different games. Some um, pretty cool, some uh, <laughs> disgustingly bad. So I don't bother um, bringing you anything that I don't enjoy. And this game, I really enjoy. And the cool thing about it is the AI piece, the artificial card intelligence. So how this game works is your AI buddy helps you build and construct decks and then also will play them in ranked matches for you but you can also manually control the deck and play against different ai decks that are built you know across the uh network of this game now the cool thing about that is that means that you don't have any lag or any disconnections or anything like that um, although I am using an emulator, so if there is any lag, that's more lag on my part with the emulator and recording software. Just making that a quick little note here. But outside of that, you know, when you're playing ranked online, there is no risk of a disconnect, which is irritating <laughs> to say the least. Now this game is played completely different than any other game that I've played. Um, I would say that if I was to say it's similar to something, it's sim most similar to a very dead trading card game called uh, Versus System, if any of you guys remember that. But basically, there's a field, there's a mana zone, and there is um, your hand, and then you have your deck, and your banished, and your graveyard, which is called the trash in this game. I really like that they call it trash. It's really funny. It's like when you look at some of the cards, it says, look in the trash <laughs> and bring out your monster. <laughs> it's just really funny. A lot of those cards that revive the trash are the purple archetype, which is more of like your darkness archetype. But uh, we'll get more into those archetypes and things like that later. So as you can see here, you know, the best way to describe how this game is played is to just kind of look through the deck um builder and then point out a few different things and then we're going to jump into an ai game and then we're going to jump into an actual rank duel or rank battle and then i'm going to actually pilot the deck so then you guys get to really see and experience kind of how the game is played so one thing i do want to point out you can either build the deck on your own or build the deck with the help of your ai assistant or have your ai assistant build it completely all on its own it's all up to you how you want to get it done it's just based off the cards that you actually have in your pool but pretty much i call this deck the ai help deck because i built half of it and then i had the ai come in and fill up the blanks um, i pretty much put in a concept of what i wanted which was kind of this fast resource building um type of deck and then i want to have a bit of control through using my creatures to destroy my opponent's creatures so that i could actually um apply my win condition which is you know beating them over the head with my big big monsters <laughs> the first thing i want to talk about is these interesting minion type mana resource creatures so in this game you can use your minions as resources and use them as mana and then also you can uh use them as creatures to attack and block with but some creatures have the effect where they can't block so when it says uh base this minion cannot move or base uh when placed it has an effect basically it's saying when it goes into uh the base zone this pretty much gives you an effect so the effect is it lets you search outside of your deck and grab a card um, and add it to your hand. This is actually a legendary card. You can see the rarity at the bottom left corner. And it's really good because this card allows you to get a big boss monster, which you can see right here. If you click the little link, uh, you can click the you click the link and you can search over and see the related cards and you can go grab this boss monster from outside of your deck now i don't have the rest of these but pretty much if you have um that one spell you can get right into this card and this card comes out and exhausts a creature now the cost for the card is six and you can see it costs 
six and two green. So that would mean that if you're playing a green deck, you can play this if you have a minimum of two green uh, mana and then the rest can be anything. Um, it has 600 attack uh, when it attacks against another creature, but then also when it attacks you're against a player, it can deal two damage. Now, the reason why that's relevant is some creatures do not have um, actual damage that they can deal. For example, this creature, um, he does not have any damage he can actually deal to a player. This this creature can only deal damage uh, to another creature, but typically you would use him as a resource, but we'll get more into that later, my boy. So let's take a look at just pretty much how a player's life is set up because I know that's pretty much, um, that's, that's the meat and potatoes of this. So let me just tell you how that's set up. So you pretty much have these things called forces. Without these forces, you would have uh, 12 life. With the 12 life, um, you can just go into a game, right? With no special abilities, no force, and just get wrecked. But you don't wanna do that. You wanna use the forces to your advantage and actually get some pluses off of it. So the first thing I like to I like to use in my grass deck is this one called Pegasus. Now Pegasus is really interesting because it says if you have four or more mana, your movement is increased by one, meaning that I can move creatures from the field to the base or the base to the field, one additional uh, move per turn. Think of that like a normal summon kinda, you just get an additional one. And then this is uh, Ouroboros. It says all of your minions uh, that are not tokens are returned to the active state at the end of the turn, meaning that I can attack with it and then on the next turn I can defend with it. So when I add these um, forces to my to my uh, set here, it reduces my base life and puts a little bit of that life into each force based on the cost that it has, which is two and three. So pretty much you're gonna be splitting five force against your life. And if you lose all your life, you lose, regardless if your forces are still intact. But your opponent can attack your forces and destroy it and cause you to lose those abilities. So when a monster is played on the field, unless you have an effect that says otherwise, you cannot attack a player's life on that turn it's played, but you can attack the player's life the next turn. So that brings a little bit of strategy into how you're even gonna use these cards. But I think that's just pretty much enough of me explaining that. Um, I think it's time for us to actually get in and uh, play an actual game. So the first one I'm gonna show you um, is an AI game to show you how well the AI plays the deck. And then after that, I'm gonna show you um, a ranked game where I actually play the deck. There is a spot where you can go to have the AI take a look at your deck. Um, so the AI will take a look at my deck and scan through the deck and scan through my pool of cards and see if there's any cards missing that I should add. So we're gonna take his suggestions and add the cards because this um, actually I recorded my rank duel or my rank battle beforehand and then I'm going to uh, do show you the AI one right now with his uh, changes. So I opened up a couple packs in the meantime, which by the way, I do wanna point out the artwork on these cards are absolutely gorgeous. You can definitely tell that there's a lot of love put into making these cards and then also the style varies between the cards. So you can see like this one is like a little more kind of anime-ish, a little more bright and bubbly, a different kind of style. But then if you go here, these cards are, you know, more computer generated, more serious looking. Uh, and I really do like that. So it looks like we're gonna be making a, a quick change. They're gonna be adding these two new cards, which um, reading their effects says that they kind of help more with resource management. And then this is, they're gonna take out two cards and basically drop one of my village girls, which is basically a mana source. And then they're gonna actually drop out um, the uh, Dimate sisters, which is actually one of my bigger cards. Um, and I just was running three, so it's gonna drop one down to two. So that's fine. And then also it's actually gonna change my force here. It's gonna change my Pegasus to the Minotaur. And I believe the Minotaur yeah, it reduces the damage um, to my life by one. So pretty much if someone wants to deal damage to me, they have to deal damage with a minion that has at least two damage instead of one damage because the one would be nerfed. So let's try it out, my boy. We're gonna try it out. We don't wanna hurt our AI buddy's feelings. We're gonna make the changes right now. 
we've added in the cards and we're gonna save the deck and get into a battle all right so let's battle we're gonna go right out to a rank battle and in these rank battles the interesting thing is um because your ai can actually take control of the battle you can sit back and watch your ai play your your game perfectly and then i can commentate over it because definitely i had to watch my ai before i actually was able to get in there confidently <laughs> so if you want to do an auto battle you make sure you turn the auto battle on right here where it says auto battle and then you're going to hop into the matchmaking now the cool thing about this is that when you're doing um a battle online you're fighting against the ai of another player you aren't playing an actual player but the ai is really smart really smart so it's gonna make perfect plays every time and uh honestly the cool thing about it is there's no risk of disconnect there's no risk of uh lag or things like that and if there is any lag the lag is 100 percent on my part because i'm playing this through an emulator so that i can actually record it through obs studio so um that's neither here nor there but i just kind of wanted to put that out as a side to uh what's going on so you guys can know what's up so we found an opponent i'm gonna pray to god that the opponent is not a purple player or a red player because that's not gonna be good. But if they if they are a red player and they are playing golems, my boy, we got a little trick up our sleeve for them, my boy. But it, it does get kind of spicy depending on <laughs> who you're playing against. These, these decks are crazy. All right, Blade Babe. I never played against Blade Babe. Never played against her before. Or that, or yeah, never played against her. <laughs> All right, here we go. Time to watch this AI battle, my boy. Now, I do enjoy playing it myself. Um, and I, in my personal opinion, I think going first is a godsend. Now, in this game, you do get a mulligan. So you starting off and you see he's getting rid of some of the bigger cards and he started off, or he actually started off really good. So uh, here we go. He's gonna use a mana resource because each turn you get a free mana or you can play a mana from your hand. So. Like I mentioned before, playing this card allows you to search your deck for your boss monster. And then he plays the other uh, scimitar card that lets you search your deck for another mana resource, which is a great start for this deck. Now, it looks like he's paying, uh, playing the yellow deck. The yellow deck is pretty busted. They have some really good effects and some really good cards. And depending on how strong his deck is, it could mean trouble for us right now. But uh, we actually got a pretty good start going off. So we were able to drop a creature out. And as you can see, our resources and our mana is built up to three. Um, the whole thing about this deck is to try to build resources a little quicker than your opponent. And then uh, hopefully take advantage of that resource building to keep your opponent constantly uh, uh, behind in terms of resources and creatures and then overtake them over time. Now, we're up at four mana now. He dropped down his creature to make five mana. So now we can drop our big beast. Now he's attacking in for two damage and we actually did two damage to the force. So next turn we'll be able to do two damage to the actual player. But because he changed the uh, force ability from uh, Pegasus, he wasn't able to retreat his card afterwards and he wasn't able to make that additional movement for these past four resources so let's see how uh the ai continues this battle because right now the ai is definitely in the lead yep so he used he used the flamingo to get an additional resource and then he played back the boss monster but it looks like he has a response so when you're doing battle when you're making an attack Right before the attack, your opponent has an opportunity to play a spell card from their hand. If it's a card that can be played in the opponent's turn. And the funny thing about that is you only get to do that against your opponent if your opponent attacks. So a lot of times you won't attack because you're trying to make a balance between should I allow my opponent to play a spell or not. And right now, one of our forces got destroyed. So now we won't be able to um, make our creatures active after they attack because basically it got destroyed because we didn't have any blockers. But now we, as this game 
as you're seeing right now, we benefit from very late game play. So now the turns have been going on. We have eight mana and we were able to spam all these creatures onto the board. So it's going to be really hard for our opponent to just get over. But there are creatures and spells that hit multiple things on the board at the same time. So I do know this, this is moving really fast, but right now we are doing pretty good. <laughs> All right, so when our forces are destroyed, they do have effects and most forces either let you search a creature or search a mana source and uh, our force let us search a creature. So because our deck specializes in exhausting creatures and also um, just overrunning creatures, now we've built up our resources to the point where we should be able to claim victory. So we're going to start removing some of the monsters and uh, setting up the board. And now we got to be careful because he has four damage on board and we can't just afford to let him just take all of our life. But the AI is in control. So the AI know what is, knows what it's doing. So we're going to trust the AI that his strategy is sound and we're going to trust our deck. Oh, it's getting, it's getting crazy over there. <laughs> this man. Okay, listen. Now he has an overwhelming army and... Um, we have our creature that can rest the creature, and now we have our big, uh, this is one of our other boss monsters, this, uh, this tree man, <laughs> the maple tree walker. This guy is actually, uh, well, now he's going back to the hand. It's tough for this, it's tough for him to get through. Oh, this is actually what we kind of needed? No, nah, the hippo's not going to help here. The hippo can only take really one card. But we, we are still, <laughs> this is kind of almost like a stalemate actually, now that you're looking at it here. Because we've met each other creature for creature, and right now, oh, here it is. This is the card that we needed right here, the Blinding Rose. Blinding Rose is going to pretty much uh, make our opponent's creatures uh, tapped so that they can't move. And you can only use that in that flash phase. So here, here we go. And that also another advantage of this game is that you can do multiple attacks and multiple moves and you don't have to do it in a specific order. Like you can just play it through your phases. So you can attack, then move it to a resource and then play another creature and then attack again. So with this card that we just used, we can make two creatures just tap them and they can't be used until the next standby phase, which is really good because we lock down the biggest monster to swing it for us. 1100 points and does four damage and now it's going to have an opportunity to attack for game because now he's at one point and we're going to come in and he only has one blocker and he has four cards in hand but he couldn't stop us and there you go that's a gg our ai was able to win the duel now will i have the same luck Will I be able to go nuts like this? I don't know, my boys. Let's see what I'm doing on my side. <laughs> Getting in there. And then also what I really like about this thing is the battle report. As you can see here, it shows the battle report and it shows when you're doing bad, when you're doing good, and when you start doing excellent. So the funny thing is, it's like the AI thing is always judging you constantly. It's like you were doing really good until you made a big mistake and it looks like you were gonna lose for a long time. But then you start to make a comeback and then you made some perfect plays and then you won the game. So I really like that too. <laughs> it's actually very spicy, my boy. So let's look at me actually play a rank, a rank match. I would imagine that a lot of them must have a lot more harsher reactions than Nani, which ironically mine actually says Nani when you fuck up. So yeah, this is gonna be pretty interesting. Let's go. First? Yes, okay. Going first really helps. Um, his hand's not all that great. A lot of late game stuff in his hand. Uh, switch this out, please. Uh, I actually do not like how it went. 
isn't the best thing. Alright. Lisa gave us a turn one. Alright. So that mana will let you search your deck for another mana. And you get to, I'm searching my deck for the one epic rare mana that I have. And this like legendary epic rare card allows you to get one of your boss monsters from outside of the deck. So that's like a cool thing I like about green. All right. Hey, just in time. All right. So we're going to play that card. We're going to search. All right, there's that card from outside the deck. And then we're going to drop, wait, is this the one that, oh, this is the one that lets you get the mana from the hand. Uh, Actually, let's not do that. Let's do this instead. All right, drop this. And she activates a mana from her hand. So kind of speeds up our resources a little bit. And then we can drop the boy. Bam. And then search the deck. Add another mana. All right. There you go, boys. So that's how you're supposed to play green. That's how you play green, boy. So right now he's on basically three mana and uh, Nani. I'm going to pass because I'm going to keep on some mana because he's just going to swing it and get some mana. He's being cheeky. All right, uh, here's mana and then, uh, who's this one? Oh, yeah, we're going to bring her up. Yeah, I can't do a life attack first. Why not? Uh, I'm gonna pass. All right. Bullet punch. All right, search. All right. So this spell is gonna let me search for a big boss monster next turn. Uh, yeah, and I think that's it. Yep, that was everything. All right, so we're we're getting pretty pretty up there. So one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna be at six. We'll be at seven next turn. So seven. I mean, we can clap that card immediately. All right. Nice. Mana, and this is our six. This is gonna exhaust it. We don't want to exhaust it. I want to kill it. So we're gonna bring this down. We're gonna drop this on him right now. Hold this L, boy. Get off my field. Smacky, smacky. All right. I think that's it. Yeah. Alright. So turn eight. Alright, so so we got a nice little lead going right now. If we can continue to press the advantage and kill off anything he plays and constantly block and just just constantly annoy, we can uh do a pretty good job. So yeah, we'll we'll do six on six and block. We won't let him get through with that. He doesn't keep his minion, so that's fine too. Alright, so we put up the free mana. And this is the one that says put all your uh, opponent's minions and rest them. Uh, seven, so that's the swoop in. That is the eight joints. Hmm. This one is, uh, let's destroy, draw a bunch of cards. I'm going to just drop this right now. I know it's, tell I know it's telling me that I should, uh, pull this up and whatnot. We can do that now. Alright, give me this. Alright, we took out one of his forces. That's always a good sign. If you can get a force. Ending somebody's force really helps you get an advantage. Alright. Alright, now, now he's about to start getting busted. Alright, 
600 power minion. What? 800 and pass his turn. Okay, now it's gonna be now it's time to start stunning him. Right. Drop this down. Bring this up. Then let's go ahead and play this. Alright, stun. Because this is going to put the stun on two of his cards. Up until my standby phase. So I'm about to get over on that li on some nice damage real fast. Uh, put one of your opponents in the thing. Oh, yeah, this is the final search. So I'll do this right now. And, uh, yeah, actually, this would probably be really good. This one drops everybody by 300 when he swings. But yeah, this would probably be. No, actually, you know what? This is probably the better one. Since he's going to drop everybody by 300 when he swings. That's going to be lethal for next turn. All right, so swinging in. Take your one. Swinging in. Take your one. You will finish. Yes. We did it, boys. Finally. Man, it is so hard to get these dubs. <laughs> it's like a constant battle between the AI, the metagame, and what else is going on, you know, all over the place, my boy. So, yeah, that was pretty spicy little dub, but we got in there, my boy. And the, and the reward is actually some packs. So let's grab one of those packs. And this shows the, the battle record and it shows how we, how good we were doing. So pretty much it said that, you know, we started off, we started off good. We were winning and we maintained it all the way to the end and continued to win. So that's what's up, my boy. That's what's up. All right, my boys, thank you so much for watching this video. If I was just to wrap this entire video up, it's a just basic review. I would say I really enjoy this 200 IQ gameplay. Um, this artificial card intelligence is busted. Honestly, it really does give you um, this sense of satisfaction from being able to play against the AI when it makes perfect plays. And at the end, when you see the, the battle report and it shows all excellent, it shows that you made all great moves. It does make you feel really good. But my boys, I'm going to leave that up to you. Don't forget to use these links in the description down below to download Xenozard today. There is a current campaign going on right now. You can get anywhere from 240 to 500 cards. So I really think that you guys should use my links in the description below to download Xenozard today on your Android or iOS device. And uh, my boys, honestly, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I appreciate you guys supporting me on my channel. And thanks again to Xenozard artificial card intelligence for reaching out to me for this sponsored video so as always my boys thank you so much for watching and keep it dank We're running with the lions, lions.